Hello AP Calculus AV students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we're looking at video number three from our topic 4.2 which is all about particle motion and the connecting position and velocity and acceleration. And in this particular example we've got a little bit of a different depiction of this motion and it involves ah, a bug of all things. And we're given a graph of this bug's velocity. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is, uh, as I said, example three in the notes that I provide for my students. Um, this one is actually a wonderful problem that was written by my good friend Brian Passwater. So example three says, the graph below models the velocity of a bug on the interval time zero to 13. And we're asked several questions based on this particular graph. We have four different parts and we'll read through what each part asks. Part A, find the velocity at time 3 and the velocity at time 11. Part B, find accelerations at three different instances, time 1, 5, and 9. And then we have a problem that asks at what time does the bug turn around, and we have to provide reasoning for that. And then finally in part D, on what interval does the bug have a negative acceleration? Now hopefully you've had a chance to look at some of the preliminary videos that accompany this or maybe even looked at some of the great videos that are done on AP Daily on the AP Classroom website. So you need to have just a little bit of rudimentary knowledge on po position, velocity, and acceleration. So for part A, probably the easiest part. When you find the velocity at time three and you're given a graph of velocity, well, there's not a whole lot of work involved. You just locate that time three, find out what the uh, corresponding, I would say, y value, but it's really a v value would be, and we find that we get six. And so you can just write that up as v of three equal to six. Now, this is one of the rare instances in motion that you don't have to worry about units. We haven't been given any kind of units for our linear measurement like feet, inches, meters, and we don't have any really time measurement. So when you don't have those units, don't have to worry about putting them in. For V of 11, we're going to do the same thing. We find our 11 located down here and we see a point on the graph that corresponds with the V value of negative 2. And that's really all there is to it. So very easy part A. Now, part B, we've been here before. Hopefully, you guys recognize this, but I'm going to ask you to find acceleration at time one. And that's what this A is going to correspond to. So the acceleration at time one. Well, at time one, we find ourselves on the graph right about here at that point. However, we don't want the y value there or the v of t value, but we want the a, which is the slope. So you have to figure out what is the slope of that segment. And if you look pretty carefully, I think you'll notice that the values have pretty nice locations in those spots, up to over 1, up to over 1. Very safe to say that a of 1 has a value of 2 in that case. And of course, you're going to do the same thing at 5, which X marks the spot there. We see that that resides on a part of the graph that is a straight line that is horizontal. And thus, we have 0 for that slope. And then finally, at time 9, which puts us right there at that location, right on the X axis. And if we start thinking about, hmm, where are our nice points there? we see that it looks like we're going down three and right one. It's not a bad idea to test that out a couple more times. And I would agree, negative three would be the result. Looking at the slope of the graph. And take note, this graph is going to have to consist of these straight line segments. Now I want to point out, this problem would likely have been scaffolded with a little bit more information. We would have been told that this graph consists of line segments. We probably would have been told that V stands for velocity, A stands for acceleration. So I've kind of stripped away a lot of the language so that we could just get right into the most important parts of, of the problem. Part C, at what time does the bug turn around? Now we're getting into things that are a little bit more complicated. And you just have to think common sense. A bug turns around. Well, you know what? Let's draw a little bug. How about that? Here's our bug. It's got a nice little head there, a little antenna. There's our bug. Now let's see, can I make this bug move? Looks like I can. 
So this bug is moving, and then he decides that he wants to turn around. Now it's very important, <laughs> I didn't make the bug turn around, he's actually moving backwards, right? <laughs> but it's very important to understand that when we study motion in calculus AB, we're only going to talk about motion on a straight line. That's why they call it straight line motion. So you can't turn around and do things like this, where you are perpetually in motion. If you are going to stay on this straight line and this bug decides to turn around and then go the other direction, what must he have to do first? We'll put it in slow motion and he... You got it. He has to stop first. So that's one of the things that you're going to look for. The second thing you're going to look for is did the bug change directions? All right. And that's what we're kind of meaning when we talk about the bug turning around. He's going to walk one direction, stop, turn around, and move the opposite direction. So you're going to look for, first of all, when the bug stops. According to our graph, that's when velocity is equal to zero. Let's get a pen here. So I want to know when does the velocity equal zero? That's one of the things I'm looking for. Check one. But I also need to figure out, do I really change directions? Do I travel two different directions? And so if we look at the places where the velocity is zero, well, we start here at zero, but that's not really important because we don't really know what we were doing prior to zero. But when we get to this point, t equal 9, we have some very important information going on. We notice that the velocity was positive above, and the velocity is negative below. If you remember from a previous lesson, we changed from moving to the right to moving to the left. Positive velocity to negative velocity. So the second thing that you look for is a change in signs. for your V. And if those two things are accomplished, then you have yourself a place where this bug turns around. And you've almost given the reason for it. You just have to kind of formalize it. So we know that this is going to happen at time t equal 9. And so we could say the bug turns around. So this wonderful little bug decides that I'm going to go right instead of left or left instead of right. In fact, I think he's going right and then he's going to go left, according to our graph. And that's going to happen at time t equal 9. And now you're going to have to say why. Well, we know that that's true because v of t changes signs. at time t equal 9. That would be enough. If you want to be a little bit more specific, and I'm, I like this, maybe you could say v of t changes more specifically from positive to negative at t equal 9. Now I'm going to tell you, I like this. I like this answer. It's a little bit stronger. If you just stated that v of t changes signs at t equal 9, it will get the job done. It did answer the question. But you're going to find out that we're going to be talking about a little bit more specific kinds of motion and behaviors of functions later and really locking in on the sign of the v in this case is going to be really important later on. And now we have one other part here. On what interval does the bug have a negative acceleration? Well, that's kind of interesting, a negative acceleration. Hmm. Well, we want to talk about that in depth a little bit later because we're going to talk about what does it mean to really slow down or speed up. And I want you to kind of understand that as of right now, a negative acceleration doesn't always mean that you're slowing down. And I, and I know that that can be a little bit kind of complex sometimes, but we're going to talk about that later on. But for the purpose of this problem here, what we want is an acceleration value. Okay, well, what do we know about acceleration connected to the information here that's given? Say a graph of v. Acceleration would be the derivative of v, right? So the derivative of that graph. Okay, 
Well, if the acceleration is going to be negative, that means the derivative of that graph must be negative. And so all we ought to do is take a look at this graph and find out on what parts of it is the derivative negative. And so if we look at this a little bit closer, I'm going to use a, a highlighter, I can see that, oh, we got positive, positive, positive slope here positive slope. We got some zero slope all along there, but then when I go all the way down along this section, I have negative slope. So I'm going to really color that in and highlight it. And then of course I'm back to positive slope after that. And so I just have to look and see what these intervals are. And it looks like I'm going from 7 to 10. And so that's what I want to say. I'm going to say that a of t which is the v prime is less than zero on the interval from seven to 10. And you do not really want to include the seven or the 10. You don't want to include the endpoints here. And the reason is because they're sharp turns. At a sharp turn, a graph does not have a derivative, so we cannot tell if it's positive nor negative. And so we're going to leave it open like that. And that would take care of part D. And that really wraps up the entire problem. It's a little short way to use a graph of velocity to answer some very common questions that you might see. Our next video is going to feature, I think, another bug that we're going to ask some more questions about his motion. So make sure you stick around for that. We'll see you next time.